Welcome to Rigging Doctors Boat Hacks Part 2, in which we're going to go through some simple things that make living on a boat just that much easier. Some of them may seem obvious, but others are things that we've learned throughout our eight years of experience living aboard a sailboat that you may not have thought of before. An age-old boat problem has been the storage of alcohol. It's usually in glass bottles, which makes it really breakable on a seaway. And so we're gonna show you how we store our alcohol so that it never breaks. On each of our alcohol bottles, we have one of these. It's just a plastic sleeve that stretches and fits around any shape of bottle and it provides that little bit of protection that each bottle needs so that they don't clink around during a heavy seaway or even a windy anchorage. Ta-da! Banging together, no sound. On this boat, we have two types of lighting, candles and magic. But actually, we have LEDs and LEDs. <laughs> so the strip LEDs are great for in the galley because, I mean, look, can't see what you're cooking, now you can. And these LEDs light up the whole boat. So when I bought these back in 2012, I was worried that, you know, say one of them burns out at some point, I was worried that they've discontinued the line or changed them slightly and I couldn't get an exact match. So I bought a bunch of spares. Lots of them. And these are, you know, eight years old, never removed from box. They're original. Super important, cool part about IKEA LEDs is the input voltage is whatever country you bought it in, but the output voltage is 12 volt DC. So we just literally cut off this little weird box and just wire it directly into the boat's battery bank. And what gets even better is these are really cheap. So when I bought these eight years ago, so I don't know their current price, but eight years ago, this little box of four LEDs was $20. At the same time, a marine LED and just one of these little guys was 150. So it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> so if they die, and you could buy these over and over again before you even hit the price of one marine LED. I'm indecent. If you ever entertain or uh, have anybody over, it's really nice to be able to separate your berth from their area, uh, especially if you're gonna be changing at any time. So and rather than put a door in separating the V-berth, we decided to put a curtain for a few reasons. One, it allows for proper airflow. And two, you can decide whether you want it pulled back, or not, and it's a nice pattern. So what we've done is we've added a wooden rod at the top and we've put these very makeshift kind of uh, holders for the rod to hold it up and they're very sturdy. And so whenever we need some privacy or even just to feel like we have a bedroom, <laughs> uh, it's been a really nice kind of decorative thing. We've held it up with putty so it's all removable. It doesn't mark up the boat if we ever wanna change it. And speaking of putty, if you want to hang art in your boat and then the boat leans, the pictures are all going to be crooked. It's never going to work well. So just give up on it or stick some poster putty on them. So you just put poster putty in the corners and then you hang it and it'll just hold tight. So then your pretty picture doesn't go anywhere. So we've held up all of the pictures in the boat with poster putty and as a result, we never have any pictures flying off the wall or even becoming tilted. It's an OCD person's dream and it would also work really well in a house. One thing that we found living on the boat that has been indispensable is the mason jar. We use them for so many things. And the great thing is they're super durable and they store really well. We use them to store all sorts of baking supplies like sugar and flour, but we also use them to store rice, pasta, oil, various oils like linseed oil for oiling the wood in the boat. But they can also be used for candles and storage of seashells. And they're great for storing snacks like peanuts and other various trail mixes for when you're on the road. And by road, I mean water. We also use them for making yogurt. And lastly, one huge, super important thing is they're graduated. So on one side, they have how many cups is in them. 
and on the other side you have how many milliliters. So that means that you don't have to worry about having a measuring cup because all you need is a mason jar. One important reason why we use mason jars, which are glass, to store all of these things is that if you keep any paper packaging like that over sugar or cardboard packaging like that over pasta, uh, it can rot, it can get wet, and it takes up a ton of space, rectangular space, in the boat. And so it's always good to just get rid of those right away and pour your food right into the mason jars. This is our canned food locker, and if you notice, they all have their labels on, except for a few of them. So these somehow mysteriously got diesel on them and then the labels fell off. So we labeled them, that way we would know what they are. But an important thing, you'll see a lot of people will automatically take the labels off and then write the word on them. That's a lot of work. Claim is that the labels are gonna chafe off and everything, but these have been like three years in the boat and they still have labels on them. And then the other part of where people say you'll get cockroaches if you have your labels on, we don't get cockroaches. So I don't know who's getting cockroaches that way. If your label looks like it's coming off, write what it is on the can quickly, because otherwise you'll have no idea and you'll just have mystery day where one day you might get lentil veggie soup and another day you might get salchichas. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. A lot of people love that image of a nice cozy evening playing music and singing on in the cockpit and that's great except for the fact that instruments take up so much space in a boat and so if you want the ideal boat instrument it's a ukulele it's tiny you can sing with it it's like a mini guitar but the important thing about your ukulele is it should be plastic we had a wooden ukulele and it was a beautiful sound but we were worried about the moist, salty environment of the boat, and rightfully so. So we sh shipped that one home and got a boat ukulele, which is plastic and will not rot or grow mildew or anything of the sort. And so it's the perfect boat instrument. The next little boat hack is a simple way to know how much chain you've let out when you're anchoring. And all you have to do is paint the chain. So you just paint it, different colors at different segments, and then you know when the color runs out, that's how much chain you have out. So for us, we do black for 20. So for us, we do black for 20, yellow for 40, green for 60, red for 80, and white for 100. So if I see white with green, I know we're at 160. And that lets us put out chain and know how much we have out. We don't have to worry about the little tassels getting ripped off or anything like that. Now let's proceed into the head. It's very windy and noisy, so pardon that. But I wanted to show you our shower. And this is not the shower that is connected to the boat. This is our cruising shower. Here we have an insecticide sprayer that we've converted into our cruising shower by simply adding a little hose and a nozzle for a sink. This way we can pump the water, build up pressure, and then release it with the little hose nozzle. In order to get hot water, all we have to do is boil some water in a teapot and pour it in. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. One is that it helps to save water when you're out on a long passage. And two, it's really great for outdoors. If you're swimming in the ocean or going snorkeling or whatnot, when you get back onto the boat, you don't wanna get your salty body everywhere inside the boat. Instead, you can just shower off right away, right on deck with this. Now, since this has become so normal for us, when we were redesigning our head, we actually put in a nozzle specifically to fill this up. So our nozzle is right here, and all you have to do is hold it under so it fills up nicely, and then you just add your hot water from the tea kettle if you want it to be hot, and voila, a perfect warm shower. One thing about living on a boat is the challenge of just getting through your own front door. It's not as easy as opening a door and walking through. You have to take out all these slats and there's often this big treacherous step that makes up the cockpit right in front of the opening. So 
Kirby devised a fabulous plan in order to make that so much easier. I built a cockpit step. So this is our cockpit step and all it is is a really big piece of mahogany on two mahogany boards and then it's just glued and screwed together and that's it. So this nice little uh, bevel here that slides under the cushion so that way if you're sitting on the cushion by it you don't have this like lump in your butt and you have a nice sturdy very strong step. Our next trick is a combination of a fender board and your fenders and it's indestructible so they are rope fenders they're huge they're really heavy and they can't pop because they're made out of 500 feet of rope just all knotted together so with that we can tie it up anywhere we need if we are up against a really rough seawall we can double them up and they're just super strong and the best part is you can make them out of your old running rigging that you're gonna throw out now you have another use for it and it'll save your boat. Another fabulous wooden contraption that Herbie made specifically for our boat is the dinghy rack. And it has been so helpful, not just to keep our inflatable dinghy in place on the boat, but also you can use it as a hand holding when you're going up onto the deck during a storm or even calm weather. And you can lash things to it. It holds lots of storage right inside in the center of the boat so your deck is clear. And to keep everything safe and out of the sun inside the dinghy rack, uh, we wrap it in sombrella, which is another little life hack or boat hack, if you will. But the dinghy rack also helps as a sturdy stool for Herbie or myself to sit on while we're reefing the sail. It's situated in a way that one can sit on it, wrap their legs around it, and just feel safe while you're trying to get your sail reefed in a blow. So it's really simple, just two parallel bars with feet that are down perpendicular to the deck to hold them on and they're super sturdy, super strong, and super convenient. Soft shackles, they'll make you smile. So we carry two different types, and we have some that have dog bones on them, and dog bones are really nice because they're super easy to put together, and then it's really strong, and then they come off easily. And then we also have the regular kind with a knot. Now the nice thing with the ones that have knots is you don't need to buy a dog bone, because dog bones are kind of pricey. When you make a bunch of them, they add up. Now the really nice thing about a soft shackle is if you need to put something somewhere and hold it there really well, really quickly and easily, and have it be really strong, you're gonna want a soft shackle. So these are just super strong. They're made out of Dyneema, so pretty much stuff around them is gonna break before they actually break. So for example, all of our sheets are actually held on to the boat by soft shackles because if we need to relocate them, remove them, it's just easy. Do a soft shackle, hook it on somewhere else. Ah, the binder. This is especially helpful if you're living on a boat and cruising, particularly to different countries. In this binder, we have everything we could possibly need all organized in one place. We have our passports, we have our SIM cards for various countries, we have our letters saying that we've gotten visas, and so on. But my favorite section in the binder is that of the cards. These boat cards are all from various boaters that we have met along our travels and it's a way to keep in touch with them, stay connected, and we, we collect them like Pokemon cards or baseball cards. It's just a really nice, succinct way to keep in touch with those that you've met along your travels. The other great thing about keeping everything in a binder all in one place is that not only are you organized, but you look organized, which is very important when you're coming into a new country or somebody's pulled you over to search your boat. If you have this and it looks like you are an organized person, it's going to be points for you in their eyes. And in our experience, they've just stopped looking altogether because they trusted us. We hope you enjoyed that simple handful of boat hacks to make live aboard life 
just that much easier. If you guys have any boat hacks you want to share, please let us know in the comments section down below. See you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.